Hello, and on behalf of Engineering Team 12, I would like to welcome you to our milestone presentation. My group consisted of myself, Robert Rosner, Zach Smith, McKenna Crawford, and Kim Moscovich. Now, our problem was that the aliens, while on Purdue's campus, will experience electromagnetic hypersensitivity due to the electromagnetic waves on Purdue's campus. Our goal is that in five weeks' time, our engineering team will have created a solution that will both last for the entire time the aliens are at Purdue and also will be under the budget given to us by Purdue. Now, some of the stakeholders include the human Purdue students because they will be interacting with the aliens. The aliens themselves are the direct users because they will be using our product. The teachers at Purdue because they will also be interacting with the aliens. The, our engineering team because we are in charge of making the solution for the aliens. And lastly, Purdue University itself because they are giving us the money to make our solution. Some of the assumptions we had going into this project was that all the waves that electromagnetic uh, waves are produced from are similar to cell phones, so that if we can block cell phones, we can block other sorts of electromagnetic waves. Also, we assume that the aliens will be roughly the same size, about two by two and a half meters. And our last assumption is that the electromagnetic hypersensitivity affects the aliens through the ears. Okay, so um, for concept generation, we used um, a morphological chart um, with subfunctions of block waves, um, put on aliens easily, uh, easy manufacture, and um, implement. And um, we had several different means um, for them. We had around 500 um, different possibilities. Um, we also used a lot of prior art. Um, and uh, since we had to cover their ears, um, we um, um, used things such as a headband, um, headphones, um, and um, a pendant uh, or a necklace um, that has a transmitter in it that will block the waves. And then um, we found out, however, that they're here on our back. So uh, we came up with the idea of a poncho as well. And then uh, we put these solutions into a um, weighted decision matrix and um, then um, through our calculations uh, we found that um, the poncho is clearly the um, best choice. Um, so that is what we use for our solution. Okay, so this is a prototype and it is made out of a garbage bag, but in with the actual type, it will be made out of a vinyl fabric, kind of like a shower curtain, and it'll be durable, waterproof, and recyclable. And it needs to be durable because um, the aliens will be wearing this around campus or their classes, so they need to be able to wear something that will last and help them protect themselves from the waves. And um, we made it to actual size, so it's two by two and a half meters, and it is um, for one unit. It will only cost six twenty nine. So the total budget comes out to about $943, which is under the $1,000 budget. Um, the back has an aluminum foil, which will cover the ears on the alien um, to block the electromagnetic hypersensitivity. And through our assumptions, we said the electromagnetic hypersensitivity would only become apparent if in direct contact with the ears. So having foil covering the ears on their back, that will prevent the problem. Um, it also comes with adjustable drawstrings for the neck to make the poncho more comfortable for the aliens to wear. And they will not be self-conscious walking around campus in the poncho because it is a typical garment seen during the rainy season. As you can see from all of our group members, our product, our final solution, is recyclable under the allotted budget of $1,000 and also energy efficient. Thus, we consider our design to be a sustainable solution. And also, it is a success because it meets all the criteria and constraints set forth at the beginning of the project. And on this slide, you can see some of our references for this presentation. Thank you.